STEAM DRUNK! Capcom released a collection of 90s beat-em-ups titled Capcom Beat-em-up Bundle, and it's available on PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and finally PC, which is how I've been able to play it. It's a group of seven games which I'll briefly go over one by one, but first I want to list some of the features here right away so you can decide for yourself whether or not this is worth the $20 it's going for. First, all seven games appear to be their arcade originals. All the visuals, music, sound design, and the like are all intact as they were when they first appeared in the arcades. For example, in Final Fight, you'll see Roxy and Poison. The first level boss's name is Damned. The second level boss's name is Sodom. You get the idea. Second, there is both couch co-op for up to four players and online co-op as well for all seven games, which is pretty cool. You can both start your own game and have other people join, or you can join someone else's game as it's happening. The online gameplay worked fine for me for the most part. If there was any lag, it went away pretty quickly. The only caveat is when someone joins the middle of your game, there's about an 8 second pause as that player connects to the game. When playing offline, you have the option of saving your game anywhere, which is handy. You also have the option to crank the difficulty way up for each game, but you can't limit the number of continues you have. That obviously makes it much easier to finish whatever game you're playing, but it would have been nice to be able to impose some limits to make the games a little more difficult. You also have the option of playing either the English or Japanese version of each game, and there's other stuff here too, like art galleries, arcade decals, and borders to fill up the rest of the screen, but thankfully you have the option of shutting those off and leaving the sides of the screen black. Alright, let's move on to the game, starting with Final Fight, and I shouldn't have to say much about this one. I know most people watching are usually on this channel for Super Nintendo stuff, but if you've only played the SNES port of Final Fight, then I mean, what the hell are you waiting for? The arcade version is a thousand times better, it's way faster paced, there's way more sprites allowed on screen, and it's multiplayer. If you've never experienced Final Fight in its original form, then this is as good of a way to do it as any, especially with the online multiplayer functionality. King of Dragons is one of Capcom's best efforts of the time, and it's a great gateway game, so to speak, meaning that if you don't typically like beat-em-ups, this is a good one to get into the genre. It's faster paced than most other beat-em-ups, and the levels are much shorter, plus there's five vastly different characters you can pick from, ranging from the strong and stout dwarf to the agile elf who can hit enemies from a distance. When playing this one again, I was actually kind of surprised at how well the Super Nintendo captured the essence of the game, especially the music and sound effects, but again, it never hurts to experience the arcade original. Sticking with the sword and sorcery fantasy theme, there's also Knights of the Round. This one's a bit heavier on the role-playing game elements, where racking up points earns you better armor, a wider range of attack, and more health, while being able to switch between the quicker Lancelot, the stronger Percival, and the balanced Arthur. Bear in mind the Super Nintendo port, while very good, plays a bit differently. It's slower paced while the sprites are much larger and take up a huge chunk of the screen, whereas the arcade cuts a quicker tempo, making the player rely heavily on the parrying system. Block an enemy's attack and you're invincible for a couple seconds. So yeah, even if you've played this one to death on Super Nintendo, the original version is still well worth playing. Warriors of Fate looks and plays very similarly to Knights of the Round, only without the RPG elements, and with an ancient Chinese Three Kingdoms era feel to it, with five playable characters instead of three. It's also a very long playthrough with nine levels, and it takes at least an hour to play through this one. One unique mechanic here is the ability to summon a horse that expands your move set, so that's pretty cool. Plus, Warriors of Fate is one of those games where the US releases on Saturn and PlayStation had a lot changed, so it's nice to have the option of playing the original Japanese version here. Captain Commando is a perfectly good game on its own, but I have to admit, in this particular collection, it gets lost in the shuffle. I'd rank it as the weakest of the bunch. That's not really a bad thing. I mean, there are some great games here, but the only real unique quality Captain Commando has among this group of games is that it's four-playable compatible instead of just three-player. What normally stands out about this one are the crazy visuals, settings, enemy and boss design, but there are other games in this collection that are every bit as insane as this one is. Again, Captain Commando isn't bad, but it's not that great either. From a technical standpoint, it's certainly better than the Super Nintendo port, but if you only played the SNES version, you wouldn't be missing that much. However, you would absolutely be missing something if you didn't play Armored Warriors. If I had to pick one game to be the absolute best of the bunch, it's this one. This game is incredible mech combat at its very best, with incredible pixel art, inspired art direction and sound design that makes you want to turn the speakers up to 11. And what helps make this one so great is that after you crush your enemies and see them driven before you, you can pick up the pieces they left behind and add them to your own mech, creating some sort of Frankenstein's monster with a mounted missile launcher, a claw, or a drill for an arm, and traveling 
selling on tank treads. This game never got an official console release in the US, so in my opinion, this game is the reason to pick up this collection. It's fantastic. Finally, there's Battle Circuit, another game that was never released in the US, and another reason to pick up this bundle because this game is completely insane. It's like they thought up every crazy idea they could think up for a beat-em-up and threw it all into one game. We've got bizarre dystopian settings, bounty hunters, including one riding an ostrich and another freakish looking plant thing. We've got mad scientists, a cat lady with a pet fox, bosses like whatever the hell this is supposed to be, crazy color schemes, and the usual beat-em-up stuff like using points in a shop to upgrade abilities after each level. This game is nuts in the best possible way. It's compatible with up to four players, and it was also the very last beat-em-up Capcom developed for the arcades, and wow, did they ever go out with a bang. This one is up there with stuff like Ninja Baseball Batman in terms of craziness. So yeah, to sum up, there may not be a lot of extras here, and there are some obvious games missing, like Alien vs. Predator for instance, so this is the kind of deal where what you see is what you get. I appreciate the online functionality, and I love all seven of these games, especially Armored Warriors, so the lack of extras in other games did not bother me. I'd recommend picking this one up, if only to experience the insanity of Battle Circuit and the sheer kick-ass fun of Armored Warriors. And hey, it's not like the other five games here are bad, they're freaking awesome too. So I want to thank you for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.